So many people celebrate when they get a tax refund, when really all a tax refund means is that you simply loaned too much money to the government and you loaned the money interest-free. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can adjust some things so that you are not owing too much in taxes, and then also making sure that you are not getting a really large refund at the end of your tax year. So stick around and we'll walk through it in this video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Justine with Debt Free Millennials, the channel to help you crush your debt and live payment free. If you are new to the channel, we talk about all ways to live debt free, building your financial journey to better yourself. So scroll down and click that red subscribe button. So disclaimer in the beginning of this video, I am not a CPA. I am not an accountant, but this idea actually came to me from my brother-in-law who was trying to maximize his paycheck without paying too much or too little in taxes. So really, when you think about getting a tax refund, all that means is throughout the year, you have had too much tax withheld from your paycheck. And so you've overpaid in taxes. And then at the end of the year, when you file your tax return and you get that tax refund back in April, it just means that you spent too much money on taxes and nobody wants to do that. That's like you, if you went and physically went to your government's office, let's say that there was a state building and a federal building that you had to physically go into and write a check for your taxes, you would think twice about how much that amount would be. But a lot of times people just don't even look at their pay stub and kind of forget that all this money is being taken out. So let's talk about ways that we can avoid this situation. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to head over to the irs.gov website and you're going to be using the tax withholding estimator. I'm going to link this in the description box below so that you can use this for yourself. A couple of things that you will definitely want to have on hand before you start the withholding tax estimator is you want to have last year's tax return and your spouse's tax return if you guys are filing your taxes together. And you'll want to have a W-4 form if you are ready to make changes. Now, generally speaking, you can change your withholding amounts using a W-4 form with your employer throughout the year. So check with human resources to make sure that that's an option for you so that you can make changes after you go through this estimator. So let's check it out. All right, so when I was going through this for me and my husband, it was a little tricky for me because I'm self-employed and my husband is a W-2 income earner. So I think this tool does work best for those who earn a W-2, but if you have self-employed income, there is a way to do that within this estimator. It just wasn't as straightforward as I wanted it to be. So let's check it out. The first thing that you're going to do is kind of go through the filing status, if you have any dependents, and I felt like this part of the estimator was pretty straightforward, and then until I got to the earned net income from spouse's self-employment, and I ended up doing this. I was kind of filling this out with Kyle in mind, and then I added in my income. Next thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to do your income and withholding and then figure out how frequently you are paid and then using the last pay stub that you have, enter in the amounts that you see on your pay stub. That's why it's really important to have your last year's tax return so you can kind of base the information off of last year. Make sure you are also inputting any retirement 401k contributions and if you have a health savings account that you are entering in that information as well. Whatever you see on the withholding estimator, enter in as much information as possible. Next, you're going to have any adjustments to income. I did have some adjustments based off of my self-employed status and that I contribute to a SEP IRA. 
If you had other deductions here, you could add it as well. But a lot of times this portion may not apply to you, so you can either click See Adjustments or go to Next Step. Next, you're going to do deductions from income. You can either itemize or take the standard. Most people will fall within the standard deduction category, and that's what I chose. And then I went through two tax credits. I typically don't have any really tax credits to think of, so I just did get my results without tax credits. So on my results page, you actually, when you are thinking about taxes, you want to make sure that you don't owe too much or that you don't get too much of a refund. So really, if you can get as close to zero as possible, that's a really balanced tax return and that means you're paying just the right amount of taxes. So you can see from my results, and keep in mind, I kind of had to play with the numbers because of my self-employment status, but if it's just you as a W-2 income earner or both you and your partner are W-2 income earners, I feel like this tool will be easiest for you to figure out. And you can see that I have a 885 balance in which I might owe at the end of the year. So I feel like that's really good and it seems like there would be ways that we could avoid owing a balance by scrolling down below and it looks like that we would just have to adjust our withholding so that we are paying a little bit more in taxes than what we currently have. So the withholding estimator I feel like is a, actually a pretty great tool that the IRS is supplying, but I would also talk to your CPA or an accountant that you know that could help you with your situation so that you make sure that what you're seeing on this estimator is actually valid and true by having a live person take a look at your tax return and your forms to make sure that everything is good. Once you get that information, then you can go ahead and make those changes on that W-4 form, which I will link to below, and then you can file that with your human resources department and make those changes. Now, if you are on the opposite side of the camp in which you frequently owe money or you've fallen into a situation this year in which this is the first time you've ever owed money, there are a couple of reasons for that. One, more unemployment income happened due to the pandemic. And if you didn't have any taxes withheld from your unemployment checks, or you didn't set aside money from the unemployment income in a separate savings account for tax purposes, then you're left with a big tax bill at the end of the year. So that could be a reason why you owe money this year. The second reason is Perhaps you had some more side hustle income that you've reported on your tax return and you'll have to pay money on any side hustle income that you've earned throughout the past year. The third thing is because of the student loan freeze on any federal student loans, so there was a freeze on payments and interest last year and it's continuing throughout this past year, you're probably not going to see any student loan interest deductions. And that's typically a form that you receive so that you can deduct student loan interest that you've paid throughout the year from your tax return. Because there wasn't any student loan interest charge on federal student loans, you're probably not going to see this as a deduction and therefore increasing the amount of taxes that you owe. So I'd like to know in the comments below, do you typically owe taxes at the end of the tax season or do you typically have a tax refund? And what's been your experience with that? Let me know in the comments below. Typically Kyle and I owe taxes at the end of the year because of my self-employment status and so I've really been trying to focus on making sure I'm setting aside and paying enough of my quarterly taxes every single quarter to offset a big owed balance by the end of the tax season. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm not a CPA, but this is what my brother-in-law found worked well for him and he gave me the idea. So thank you for sending this my way. And I thought the tool was a great, great resource to use for those who want to make sure that they are not owing too much or having too much of a refund when it comes to the end of tax season. Thanks guys. And I'll catch you in the next one.